All right, welcome to another episode of PT Meal Physical Therapy Podcast, a potluck of ideas, insights, and information from Filipino physical therapists. Um, so for today's episode, uh, we are going to talk about a very interesting topic. So in this time wherein we cultivate and encourage ideas through research and innovations and inventions, I guess it's uh, but important to know a little bit about intellectual property. And to shed light on this topic is one of my professors in physical therapy school. He is now the executive assistant for intellectual property and research in the office of the vice rector for research and innovation in the University of Santo Tomas. So my guest for today is associate professor Michael George Peralta. Sir Mike, welcome to the show. Hello, Johan. Good evening. <laughs> good, to, uh, good evening, to our friends in the U.S. and good morning here in Asia. Okay. Hi, sir. Uh, so um, before we dive into the topic, um, for those who are not familiar who you are, so could you give a background on how you became a physical therapist to, to where you're or to your current role out right now? Uh, again, good day to everybody. I, I am Associate Professor Michael George Peralta, uh, physical therapist since 1997. I, I practice as a volunteer physical therapist in at the uh, Polinari Mabini Rehab Center for three months and then went on to teaching at the University of Santo Tomas. And I've been teaching there ever since. And um, so it's been 23, 24 years wow. of, uh, of teaching. Okay. Then sometimes I get referrals from, from medical doctors going to home health. Okay, but nowadays I don't uh, I don't receive uh, referrals anymore. So, okay. mm -hmm. so um, right now you're in the uh, office of the vice rector for research and innovation, right? And you're uh, the executive assistant for intellectual property and research. Um, how did you get into that field from from teaching? Ah. Uh, before, when I was uh, college secretary, I think uh, you were still a student then at mm -hmm. the time? Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Mm -hmm. okay. um, when my term ended, uh, the university was, was looking for an administrator who would head, who would head the intellectual property unit. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I don't know. Maybe they saw, they saw some leadership potential in me. I, I don't know. So they, they chose me to, to head the intellectual property unit. Uh, first, I was adamant because I said, I'm, I'm a physical therapist and um, I don't know anything about intellectual property. It's, kinda, it's a kind of lawyerish thing right. by the term property. Wow, mm -hmm. that, that's uh, like a real estate. So I said, mm, maybe, well, thank you for your recommendation. So maybe I'll pass. But then they said, no, you have to, you, you can think about it. You, you, you sleep over it and then think about it. We will, we will provide you the necessary training uh, mm -hmm. for you to be able to, to hold the office. All right, so I, I slept on it. And then in the morning, I, uh, I realized that maybe it's another opportunity for, for physical therapists to practice, maybe to mm -hmm. look, to find our niche. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, you can include me in the nomination. So they, they submitted three names with my name included there. And lo and behold, I was, uh, I was selected uh, to, be, to head the office. Oh, wow. So when you get into that office, when you said yes, um, did you start to research about what intellectual property is? <laughs> or, or, yes, I uh -huh. did, at first, it was um, it was really a struggle. So I really didn't know what intellectual property was all about. And then, and then people from within the university is already calling me, inquiring about certain issues. I cannot answer yet for that time uh, during that time. So I attended uh, I attended seminars conducted by the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, uh, their capacity building programs, okay, and um, yep, slowly, uh, slowly but surely, I came to know a bit about intellectual property. Then, in order to to give um, to, 
to give credibility to to what I to what I'm doing. I I try to look for a scholarship abroad, and luckily I was uh, I was uh, I was accepted in the World Intellectual Property Organization Academy, the Waipo mm. Academy. Uh, so I studied the uh, Master of Law in Intellectual Property. Oh wow! How was that experience, sir? Oh, it was it was absolutely <laughs> brilliant. It was very uh, good. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, my classmates. Uh, Ninety percent of them are lawyers, international uh -huh. lawyers. Yeah, only ten percent of the class are non-lawyers. Uh -huh. So, which included me. Uh -huh. So, at first, there there was a, there was an inferiority complex. They're really very good. Okay, but then I realized, of course, these are lawyers. When the problem already arise, uh, they arose. Uh, there's an issue in IP. Then they come in. Mm -hmm. But prior to the issue, prior to any legal, legal, uh, legal challenges, it would be us, the non-lawyers, who would be uh, facing the, the mm -hmm. clients. Ah, nice. So, what would they say if they, they find out that you're you're a physical therapist in, in that in that program? Were they surprised? Well, they, <laughs> mm, they, they were they were amazed that uh, a physical therapist was was part here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, our professor said, "No, we need we need health. We mm -hmm. need uh, somebody in the health profession in order to to know about what IP is all about. In in order to, for us to maybe to make to to start businesses or to make uh, researches that would that would involve uh, uh, the betterment of health, uh, the way we treat patients, mm -hmm. which I now realized it's a very mm -hmm. important uh, thing." Uh -huh. So aside from that, sir, how were you able to relate your, your physical therapy background, your teaching background in other roles in college to, to IP in your current role right now? It's kind of, it's very far, really very uh -huh. far. Because here we're talking about laws, we're talking about um, guidelines, rules. Well, physical therapy is really, it's really uh, treating patients. Okay. Uh, but I came to like it because... Um, Plenty of our, many of our assistive devices mm -hmm. okay, are, are medical devices, are classified under medical devices. And you would be surprised that you have, you, maybe you've seen plenty of variations of wheelchairs from a simple manual wheelchair to a mechanical one. Mm -hmm. okay? So these are inventions. These are incremental improvements mm -hmm. because the ordinary wheelchair, well, it does not solve it doesn't solve any. It, it does not solve a problem, a complex problem of a, of of a, of a complicated patient. Let's say a uh, a cervical spinal cord injured patient. Mm -hmm. okay, if you give them a standard wheelchair, well, of course that we all know it is not appropriate. So we have to we have to make another wheelchair or buy another wheelchair that is suited for them. Okay, so I realized that these inventions were created because there was a need. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the mother of all inventions is a need, is a mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's right. what I learned. So you would, uh, you would be surprised that crutches nowadays, there are several innovations that you can see in crutches. Okay. Even the design itself of a crutch is very, very beautiful. Okay. Even if I have no disability, I would like to buy one <laughs> because it's a trendy thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so this is where, this is where, I kind of I'm I'm passionate already with my mm -hmm. physiology background, physical therapy background, and IP background. I can really fuse it into one and inspire uh, fellow physical therapists to to think out of the box and try mm -hmm. to solve uh, problems mm -hmm. out there. Right, right. So before we go on further, uh, could you describe to us for those who are not like like me, not familiar with intellectual property? So what is intellectual property? All right. <laughs> So intellectual property is the product of the human mind. Okay? So anything that we think about in solving a problem, okay? and then we, we create, we create from that, uh, uh, from that intellect. So essentially, it is, it is the product yeah, of the human mind. For example, um, let's say a simple toothbrush. Okay? Now you would see several brands of toothbrush with different types of uh, designs of bristles. Mm -hmm. okay? And you would also be surprised that uh, 
the tremendous research and development undergoing in a simple toothbrush. Okay. So you would notice that one toothbrush brand is different from the other in terms of design. Why is that so? Because that is intellectual property. The company protected that intellectual property so that nobody can copy that one. And they have this protection for a certain amount of period of time so that nobody can, can copy it so they get a monopoly from that, uh, from that innovation, from that invention. Mm -hmm. And... and uh... You, you've touched already with how, how does it relate to physical therapy. So as, as physical therapists, why should we be like familiar with uh, intellectual property and, and protecting the, our ideas? Because we're like, we're, as you said, we're physical therapists, we're handing patients, but we're not in the manufacturing business. We're not in the, in the design business. But as physical therapists, wh why does it have to, why do we have to be familiar with it? All right. And that's a good, that's a good, uh, that's a good question. Uh, we have to be familiar with intellectual property. Well, for those who, ha who have a very, um, who are always thinking out of the box, who is always trying to solve problems, okay, trying to improve our patients, okay, it is a way for us to, to look for solutions to a problem. Mm -hmm. And by looking at solutions to a problem, we can look at what is, this or what is already out there what is being sold, what is being, uh, what is in uh, medical journals, what is in physical therapy journals, okay? And see what we can do and apply that to our profession. Let's say I want to invent a new, a new, a new crutch, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, let's say I want to have a knee rest for that, okay? So it's a good idea. So if I, if I made something, okay, and a, a, a knee rest on the crutch, okay, that's good, okay? But we have to look at whether we might be copying Okay. There might be another crutch out there that has the same, same principle that is already mm -hmm. out that, that we know that we don't know, and it is dangerous because if you start to manufacture that, if you try to look for, uh, if you are entrepreneurial in mind mm -hmm. and you, mm -hmm. you look for a company and then that man, that company manufactures your new crutch and then there is already an existing one that uh, that is already that has your same idea, you can be sued. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's why it is important for us to look at what is out there, to, to know what intellectual property is all about. Okay? One, in order to, to look for solutions to a problem. Second, in order to prevent us from, from copying or from imitating what is already out there. Mm -hmm. Nice. So does intellectual property only uh, deal with tangible, tangible um, things or can it be a, a technique? or a ah, brilliant question mm. it is usually a tangible thing okay? mm -hmm. now uh, there are things that that can be pat that can be protected okay there are several ips uh in fact what one we're talking about patents mm -hmm. okay second we're talking about uh utility models in the u.s i think they you call it as a petty patent mm -hmm. okay? we have industrial designs in the U.S., you call it a design patent. Okay? Mm -hmm. we, have, uh, we have trademarks and service marks. We have geographical indications. And uh, we have copyrights and, uh, and other related rights. So these mm -hmm. are the different uh, intellectual properties. So your question would deal on um, tangible matter. So that would be in the realm of invention. So that would be in patents. Mm -hmm. okay? So um, regarding... Physical therapy techniques, let's say I invented a new technique in uh, treating uh, patellofemoral syndrome, PFS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I, can I uh, patent that? The mm -hmm. answer there is no, you cannot patent oh, that. Okay. Why? Because there is a rule that any, any technique, any, diagnostic, any diagnosis that is applied to humans cannot be patentable. Okay. That is why when you read in books, the techniques are named. They are only named. That's uh -huh. like the, that, uh, the, the kind of taping, McConnell taping. Mm -hmm. okay. Remember the special test, uh -huh. right? These are just names. Uh -huh. okay. This is the naming rights. But you cannot, you cannot uh, nobody can get a monopoly out of that technique that you have uh, thought about. Mm, gotcha. So that's, that's 
why there's a lot of like techniques that like stems in from other techniques, but they name their technique as their own. Correct, correct. Uh-huh. That's like you have the mulligan technique. Uh-huh. Right? And anybody can use that technique, but it's it's mulligan. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. But um, there are like for example, going piggybacking on the the techniques. There are techniques that are what do you call this? Only performed when you're certified to do that. So is that also part of an intellectual property? You're like you can't practice te- this technique if you're not certified. You don't carry the, the paper certification for it. Well, that's one way to control the uh, to control the use of that technique. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's more of their ent- entrepreneurial mind. Oh, but that's okay. why they're, they're trying to go around it mm-hmm. because they cannot they cannot file for for a patent for that technique. That's why they they would want a certification uh-huh. like, for you to be able to practice it. Right, right. Like because when you like. When you studied one type of, of taping technique, it, it's like you already know the other types of te- taping techniques, but they, they, they would brand it as their, their own and they would produce their own type of tape. Mm. <laughs> yeah, going to that point. If you, if you create your own tape that is uh-huh. different from, from a athletic tape, uh-huh. even um, uh, what do you call that newer version of the tape? Kinesia tape? Yeah, the kinesia tape. Yeah, mm-hmm. if you if you invented that can be patentable. Patented. Oh, yes, the tape, so because the tape. The tape because it's but tangible. The technique, no. Oh, so like for example, those uh, are the coming out right now for um, instrument assisted soft tissue mobilizations. Those um, silver, uh, what do you call silver tools? Those yes. are patentable. Yes. The design tools, of it. Yes. Mm. Or if you invented a robot who can do your technique, then the robot is patentable. I see. <laughs> I see. So you you mentioned about the the concepts of like patents. So can you can you run through with the the concept? What are like what are patents? What are trademarks and, and cap copyrights? All right. Okay. Uh, patents. Uh, patents are um, patent. Is an IP grant okay, mm-hmm. given to you by a government okay, uh, that excludes others from making, selling, producing your invention okay, mm-hmm. in exchange for disclosure. In other words, if I, let's say I have a smartphone here, if I invented a smartphone, okay, so everything that is in here, I will prevent others from making, selling, or importing the product. Mm-hmm. So I get protection. Okay, and um, uh, the, the usual protection is 20 years from the date of filing. Okay? Okay. 20 years from the date of filing. Okay, so those are, uh, that, that is a patent. Okay? A, um, a utility model or a petty patent, on the other hand, uh, is similar to a patent, okay? but it has a different criteria. Okay? I forgot to mention, let's go back to patents again. Um, talking about patents, you need to hurdle three criteria. First, it should be novel, the novelty criteria. Second, there must be an inventive step. And third, it must be industrially applicable. Okay, Let's go to the first, novelty. Your invention or what you have thought about must be new, not only mm-hmm. in your country, but in the world. Okay? Oh. Yes, in the world. It should be new because the government will not give you a monopoly for that. That, that, that monopoly is very powerful. Mm-hmm. If there is a similar gadget of your invention, mm-hmm. okay, because that is injustice. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they will only give you a patent right if okay, your invention is truly new. Nobody thought about it. Nobody made it okay, in the world. So right? even if it's an innovation of something or a different approach or like you tweaked it a little bit it's it doesn't uh yes. categorize as a new mm. oh okay yes a change in color a change in size a change in shape does not fall under uh-huh. a new mm-hmm. uh, invention okay second there must be an inventive step okay in the u.s you call that uh the non-obviousness criteria okay it tells us that 
a person who is skilled in the art, meaning those who are really making smartphones. Okay? What you did is not obvious to them. Okay? And mm -hmm. we're talking here of not a, not a master rate graduate, not a PhD graduate, but a simple engineer. Mm -hmm. Let's say you add A plus B and you in, your invention is C. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my invention is C, I add A plus B. If an engineer, okay, you showed your, uh, your product and your, the engineer said, ah, yes, that is obvious. A plus B will give you your invention C. Then, therefore, you will not qualify as a patent. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the harder criteria that you will need to hurdle. Mm -hmm. The third criteria is very easy because anybody can think about uh, the industrial applicability, which is the use for a, for a device. Okay. The first so two is very difficult. So it's like the function of yeah. the industrial applicability. It's hard for, yeah, for you to be able to go through the like, inventive criteria because uh, it, it has to be really, really new that no one has yes. thought about. <laughs> yes. If you're going, if you have uh, watched the uh, Steve Jobs um, launch of the first iPhone, he ha he had a very good description there, from the from the old versions of of smartphones to the first generation of the iPhone. He said they wanted to have a leapfrog, a leapfrog technology, which is very far away from the usual small, uh, the old version of the smartphones. Mm -hmm. I, I like his description there. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll look into that. So, what's the difference with patents with a with a with a petty patent? Okay, a petty patent is similar to a patent, but the second criteria of inventive step or non-obviousness is not there. Mm. In other words, it must be new. Okay, it must be new, and it must have industrial applicability, or there must be a use. So there is no inventive step. And that's why the protection here is only seven years. Oh, okay. Okay, it's only seven years. Now, why do why do they have this petty patent system? Mm -hmm. Well, because uh, maybe you have heard that if a, if a new technology has been released, they say that don't buy it yet because there are plenty of errors. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of bugs maybe on that on that. Uh, uh, on that technology. So wait for the second, third, or fourth iteration or first, fourth version of it because they have already corrected those, those bugs, those, those, uh, those uh, minor problems. Mm -hmm. And those corrections that they made from the first invention, mm -hmm. okay, those are protected by petty patents. Ah, okay. Okay. Because it is new and there ah. is industrial applicability. But there's no inventive step because the first one was already the main Protected. inventive step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the innovations to a previous invention would fall under petty patents. Petty patents, yeah. Ah, I see. So would would medical devices come in the the criteria of patents or petty patents like innovations of medical devices would that go depends. in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that depends. So it, it will, they will, they will still be, they will still be assessed uh, with the three criteria if mm -hmm. they will fall under patentability subject matter. Mm -hmm. Now, if they, if if the if the uh, patent examiner sees that there's no inventive step, then that will only be that will fall upon petty patents. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Like because there there are ads now in, in the television that has this walker. Their innovation is the walker can be flipped to be able to, um, what do you call this? It would adjust to the stairs. So the, the front, front steps would be higher than the, the back, back um, feet. So it would be like you can go up and down the, yeah, okay, the stairs with it. Then mm -hmm. as you go to the uh, even surface, it can collapse again and be go even. Flat surface. Yeah. <laughs> so wow, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm -hmm. wow. Uh, I wonder. I wonder um, if that would be as stable as a walker. But that's a good innovation for people who uh, are navigating stairs without any like th those who are buildings that doesn't have any ramps. That that would work. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a perfect example of a problem solution. Mm-hmm. Right. So how is it different, the like patents, petty patents, and what is the, the next one is like the industrial, industrial design? Uh, industrial design. Mm-hmm. Industrial design is the, is the aesthetic design of a product. Okay. It's so you're how just, it looks like. Uh-huh. Ah, I see. So you're just okay. changing how, how one product looks. Yes. So it's, it, you didn't change any, you didn't change any um, essential components, but just Correct. the design. Not mm. function. You're talking about aesthetics. Aesthetics. So like, for example, you're, you have an AFO, a uh, 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 thermoplast AFO, and you change the aesthetic to you use a material like a, a metal with slender, um, uh, what do you call this, slender shape. So is that an industrial design? Yes, that, that uh-huh. can fall under industrial design or mm-hmm. design patent there in the U.S. Design patent. It's just the aesthetics, yes. Aesthetics. Uh, okay. So how about trademarks? What are trademarks? Okay. Trademarks or service marks are a visible mark that you see that mm-hmm. distinguishes one product over another. Okay. So you have like a TheraBand. Mm-hmm. TheraBand is a trademark. Mm-hmm. Um, are there any other brands there in the U.S. that manufactures also elastic resistance bands? There are, I think, a lot, but they're not really like that familiar because uh, TheraBands are really widely used. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, TheraBand. See, see the power of that. Mm-hmm. Only TheraBand has that um, has that uh, trademark. Mm-hmm. So anybody can use ah, yeah, let's use TheraBand. So mm-hmm. then it, it, it tells the consumers, which is the physical therapist, we physical therapists as consumers, it's te- it tells us that the best resistance bands would be TheraBand. Yeah, bands. Mm-hmm. Right. How about uh, another example would be, I'm not familiar with trademarks of uh, athletic tapes. Mm, usually it's like uh, the Kinesio tape. Um, others that are going around, there are... Uh, muscle tapes, there are rock tapes, um, okay. K tapes. So those are their brand names. Yeah, those are mm. those can be their, their brand names. So they are like, they, they trademark their their names. The names, yeah. Mm. Like okay. Leucoplast, for example. Leucoplast, uh-huh. I've I've seen Leucoplast manufacturing already kinesio taping, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see. So what are like uh, geo indications then? Ah, geographical indications. Uh-huh. Geographical indications are indications to where the product was manufactured. Okay. okay. For example, you will find these in in food items like wines and spirits and cheese. Uh-huh. Okay. Particularly, a good example would be Bordeaux. Bordeaux wine. Have you heard of Bordeaux? I think so. Probably Cognac. once or twice. <laughs> Cognac, yeah. Cognac, yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Cognac is not really a brand name, but Cognac is a place in France. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Uh Bordeaux wine is also a place in France. It tells us that the the wine, okay, it was was produced by the vineyard there in Bordeaux because the taste, the environment, the the temperature, the humidity helped make the the wine taste so good. Uh Uh-huh. They make the cognac taste so good. Okay, so that is the geographical indication. So, for example, if I'm a manufacturer here in the Philippines, I would say, let's say, a Peralta Bordeaux wine mm-hmm. made in the Philippines. Ah, that is already misleading. Mm-hmm. I cannot say that because my wine is made here in mm-hmm. the Philippines and it did not come from Bordeaux. Mm-hmm. I see. Only those in Bordeaux can use the name Bordeaux. So and only, only them. those who can who are in Konya can use Konya. Ah. So if I'm a manufacturer in Konya, France, I can say Peralta Konya. I yes, see. Because I came from there. My wine came from there. Uh, so it's also part of your marketing strategy that you, yes. your your wines produced there. It's like for for in the Philippines, you would say um, your mangoes are from Cebu. Correct. Brilliant. Yes. Cebu mangoes. Cebu mangoes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or uh, Bicol Pili nuts. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yes. Because it came from mm-hmm. them. All right. That's a, and, and that's the what, what are like copyrights? Okay. Copyrights and related rights are 
are those intellectual property that fall under literary, okay? Literary and artistic arts. So these would be your poems, love letters, movies, novels, uh, lectures, sermons, pictures, uh, illustrations, sculptures, anything on that art. Mm -hmm. Visual arts. Even music mm -hmm. is included in copyright. Okay. And the protection of copyright is uh, uh, the author's life plus 50 years after his or her death. Ah, author's life plus 50 years after his death. Yes. Is this something that's that... Why Michael Jackson. Uh -huh. Michael Jackson passed away many years. But because radio stations are still playing his music, okay? His heirs are still earning the royalties. Wow. Is this something innate or do you have to apply for this one? Very good uh, question. That depends on the country. I believe in the U.S. there you need to apply. You need to fixate. That's, what, that's, what, that's the term that they use. You need to mm -hmm. fixate the, the artistic work and apply that uh, at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Mm -hmm. Here in the Philippines, it is automatic. Meaning, mm -hmm. at the moment of creation, you have already your copyright. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that you did not copy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that, that's an original work. Yes, or... that's it is original work. So how about, you mentioned how about lectures. Lectures that you, you compile by yourself, but is, um, you cited references from, your, from other studies. Would you have a copyright of that lecture? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, if you have a lecture, uh, the PowerPoint, Mm -hmm. uh, presentation or even video lectures yes like this one this one can be copyrighted okay um just as long as your lecture must have the proper citation mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. if, gotcha. if if your theory there is not yours then you have to necessarily cite the source it's it's mm -hmm. both ethical and uh and legal mm -hmm. to cite the source Right. So even though you're 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 the because what you're copywriting is your effort creating that lecture, compiling yes. those studies. I see. Uh, nice. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of terms to think about. Yeah. So of, of all these concepts, what is the closest to our practice as physical therapists? Hmm. For in in research, if you're if mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in the realm of research. Mm -hmm. Um, if you are inventing something, then that would fall upon patents, petty patents. Mm -hmm. If you are designing new crutches, that would be on design patent or industrial mm -hmm. design. If you are researching, um, like writing in journals, that is mm -hmm. copyright. Mm. So whatever, like even if you're, how about research publications? Is that also copyrighted? Mm. Yes, that is copyright. So, for example, if I made a, if I, if I wrote a research, okay, mm -hmm. I did a, an, ex, an experiment and I submitted it in a journal, okay, it is already telling that journal that you are assigning your copyright to that journal. Okay. So that journal uh, has your copyright. Okay, so anybody that would copy your uh, your study, okay, it's the journal who will run after them. I see. But uh, the ownership is still yours. Your, that is still yours. Yes, it's study. yours. Mm -hmm. It's yours. Mm -hmm. But we must remember, we must bear in mind that, of course, research builds up on, on previous ideas. Right. right. That's why it gets, it gets improved. Mm -hmm. it gets improved. Okay. So the, the, the right thing to do there, of course, if I'm going to build up on another idea, I would have to cite the source mm -hmm. of, of my new research. Mm -hmm. and that's why we have in Elsevier, in Scopus, and in uh, Clarivate, uh, previously Thomson, okay, uh, Web of Science, right? We have citations, citations mm -hmm. of authors. Mm -hmm. okay? So the more that the author was cited, the more the higher impact that journal or your article is. Uh, okay. So like, for example, because I've seen those, like when you click on the author's name, you see or the, the study, you'd see how many citations there are. Yeah. Um, but like, for example, my study was um, cited by a certain author. 
um, but uh, someone uh, used the study of that author and he gets cited, c- cited, would my study would also be cited or it would be that author's study would be cited? That, the, uh, the other one. Oh, the other one. Okay. Yours, <laughs> uh, yeah. Because the, 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 the third author is using the other author's study now. Correct. Mm, gotcha. I see. So we we we're, we're talking about research now. So is is that part of what you're doing in the office of the vice rector of research and innovation? Um, it's more on my work is more on the intellectual property. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the research is more on the on my head, uh-huh. like the vice rector herself. Ah, uh, gotcha. But your office um, handles all the centers for research. Yes, uh, in uh, University of Santa They Tomas. submit researchers. Yep, correct. Researchers submit their end term reports. I forward it to my boss. But mm-hmm. for intellectual property matters, that's solely mine. Mm-hmm. And in in the bigger realm of health um, health sciences, um, like for research and do 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 like um, nurses, doctors also consult your office if they have any research that they need to be uh, checked out if there are other um, copyright or patents that they they might be um, infringing on or is it their role for as researchers to look it up for themselves well i get i get those inquiries Mm -hmm. um for example yep um if they if they made a device Okay. Sometimes they just look up on on journals, mm-hmm. okay. But that's fine, okay. But what I do is that they would have to they have to accomplish a form so that I would really know what they're trying to do, and then I would do a a, a, a patent search mm-hmm. to see what is already out there, mm-hmm. because most of the time, eighty uh, percent of inventions and innovations are not found in printed journals. They are mm. found in patent documents. Okay. And where can we access these patent documents? Well, it's, right. it's freely available. If you go to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, just look for their patent search and you will already be able to browse what is already filed in the U.S. Okay, okay. so it's a public document? Yeah, yeah. Ah. Because of the dawn of the internet, it's easier now to search uh-huh. for patents. Before you would have to go to the individual patent office and mm-hmm. go to their library and do your the, the purling thing. Okay? I see. But now because of the internet, these these foreign patent offices mm-hmm. okay, provide already free access to their uh, to their documents. So that's what uh-huh. I do. Mm-hmm. That's nice. So what do you like um, in your current position? So what do you love doing there? Well, I like, I like to talk to people. You know? mm-hmm. I like to I like to talk to uh, to those who are solving problems. Uh-huh. And sometimes I can't help to be to be a little bit skeptic. Let's say mm-hmm. they come to me. I have this nice invention, so he's so excited. Uh-huh. Okay, and I say, oh, okay, okay, that's that's nice, that's brilliant. Okay, but uh-huh. I have to search it yet first. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, but but I'm not trying to burst their bubble. I'm trying right. to give. A, a little bit of reality check on them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, what you did, maybe it's good, but we have to search whether it's really novel and there is uh-huh. inventive. Uh-huh. Sometimes I, <clears throat> uh, I encountered a, a client uh, who was really so excited. Mm-hmm. And then when I did a patent search, we found out that, that the technology was already out there and it was uh-huh. even more advanced. I see. Yeah, it was even more advanced. And then, mm. of course, the face fell. Uh-huh. Okay? His face fell. And then I said, no, it's not the end of the world. Right. Okay? So what we can do is, let's see what, what, this, what this invention already out, that is out there, what it does not solve. Because there is, there is a rule that there is no perfect invention. Mm-hmm. There's always a problem within a certain invention. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you try to solve that problem and then we might have something there. So even if uh you say even if a product is already out there and you see that this product doesn't solve one of your problems, 
would that be a a, a new invention or it can it, it can be it can mm -hmm. be okay. mm. but the next challenge there would be let's say you already solved the problem mm -hmm. can you and 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 now comes your entrepreneurial mind mm -hmm. okay can you sell it well mm -hmm. that's a different story right because your invention your improvement was built on somebody mm -hmm. then you would have to talk to that somebody let's or, say for example um let's say a love strand crutch mm -hmm. let's, let's go to the standard love strand mm -hmm. crutch okay if i if if you invented your you johan if you invented the love strand crutch and i placed another lock here okay another lock here that would prevent it from falling let's say mm -hmm. okay so my invention solves a new pro uh, solves a new problem that you did not solve mm -hmm. but i cannot i cannot sell it because my invention is only the lock mm -hmm. and not the love strand. love strand so i'll have to look for you mr johan i have this new invention maybe we can talk oh yes and that's okay. what we call now cross licensing mm -hmm. so you, you you establish now collaboration with a previous inventor and hopefully mm -hmm. you end in good terms mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to market your your new product ah so it, it's also it can be also applicable for those who are um, developing apps like if you found an app that it's does it solve what you're doing what you wanted it to solve but you have an idea and you try to um, solve that problem you can also approach the app maker if you yes. would like to collaborate with them yes mm, i see oh this is very interesting right <laughs> yeah because you're right because it's uh it's all boil, boils down to problem um solving problems yes. and identifying the problems and right so would that like for piggybacking on that would like for example you have a product and there's some i don't know cultural differences uh, okay. perhaps would it also fall into um, intellectual property like you're, you're adapting that into what is culturally appropriate to 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 your like for Filipinos like for example um, at the top of my head you're thinking about a tool perhaps that you want to adapt to Filipinos would that something be in in, in the realm of the uh, intellectual property yes mm -hmm. let's say um let's say a um the sf36 mm -hmm. so uh it's copyrighted mm -hmm. so if i want to i want to apply that short form 36 to filipinos mm -hmm. so i would need to to adapt it to the culture right so i have to mm -hmm. change some questions there mm -hmm. so i will contact the original author of it Mm -hmm. I would ask if I if um, ask permission on whether if I can translate it one or adapt it to my culture, mm -hmm. okay. and then if that author responds yes you may just mm -hmm. cite my cite the source then mm -hmm. you have permission. Oh, okay, and as the one who translated it, that right. translation is all is now your copyright. Uh, yes, yes, it's your copyright, but you have but to cite to cite the, the original, original. right. Oh, very, so, very much interesting. <laughs> right, right. So for, um, we're, we're now going to, to the end of the show, but for students or our colleagues who would like to know more or would also like to go into that field of intellectual property, what advice can you give them? Um, well, if you want to be an inventor, then try to seek uh, solutions to an existing problem. Mm -hmm. most of the challenges that i encountered is that uh, researchers are just inventing just for the sake of inventing mm -hmm. okay? it's like it's a solution looking for a problem and it's uh -huh. not a solution to an existing problem mm -hmm. okay? so that that's one second um, uh, you have to know what IPs are there that can be applicable to what you're doing, okay? So that you you will be able to protect them. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Uh, good advice. So, um, as a uh, last, last, uh, last question, um, this is, the show is PT meal, so it's a complete meal of information. Um, but what are the three ingredients that make up uh, Michael Peralta? What are the three things that you feel that is important to you that you carry every day uh, that make up who you are? Wow, that's a difficult question. <laughs> I never thought about that. <laughs> well, what makes me who I who who I am? Mm -hmm. Well, one, I am um, I am determined. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if there is a hurdle, we'll try to look for solutions to that hurdle. Maybe mm -hmm. because I'm in IP, that's why it's already ingrained, it's hardwired, you know, already to to solve mm -hmm. problems. Uh, second, I always believe in people, okay? People's best, okay? Uh, if you're trying to solve the problem, then do it, okay? Because it's the way we improve how the way we live, okay? We work and we play. Mm -hmm. We make our lives better. And third is uh, being a Pax Romana, mm -hmm. yeah? It's being uh, religious, mm -hmm. okay? Always uh, putting the Almighty first before everything. Right, determination, belief in people, and also our faith in in God. Nice. So, um, thank you again for for um, sharing your your time and your experience with us. And as a last statement, closing, um, what do you want the audience to take away from our episode? Um, well, you must find your niche. This is one niche where physical therapists can, can be in. Uh, I'm the one who looks for, for ways to protect uh, what you have created. Okay? And hopefully, our patients would also benefit mm -hmm. from what we have created. Okay? Mm -hmm. So just continue what you're doing. Uh, do the best that you can. Okay. Let's help our patients, especially these trying times. They need nice. us. Right. Yeah. So there. Again, thank you very much, Sir Mike, for your time. <laughs> really appreciate it. Thank you, Johan. <laughs>